Good morning to you all here. Happy uh, Monday, June 30th, 2025, the last day of the month. Uh, crazy, we're about to be in July already here. Like I said, the year is just flying by. Uh, we've got some things to talk about today, not a lot to talk about. So we're going to talk about the tropics briefly here. Uh, that's really what we're going to be watching. Severe weather is about to end uh, really for the next couple of days after tomorrow. So we've got two days of severe weather to get through, very low in days. We're not going to be doing any coverage, not anything like that. Uh, I do want to give you guys an update. Like I said, as I've been reminding you guys the last couple of days, I'll have a video today, a video tomorrow, a video on Wednesday. We will be on vacation vacation next Thursday or this coming Thursday all the way through next Monday so there won't be any videos or any streams after uh, Wednesday morning is over with will be gone until that following Monday so just a heads up on that if you guys need weather updates or anything you guys can follow Connor's Climate Corner both on YouTube here and on TikTok he'll keep you guys updated on that I want to go ahead and briefly talk about what's going on in the tropics here first then we'll go to the severe weather side of things kind of talk globally and then kind of go from there this will be a very short video today just because there's not a lot going on so we'll keep it at minimal uh, we do want to go ahead and start with tropical storm Barry or what was tropical storm Barry did make landfall last night is now moving through Mexico with the remnants. Lots of rain, heavy rainfall, uh, some wind with that down there as well. That remnant low will be moving its way through Mexico eventually, uh, moving back off the coast here where we could kind of see some interaction with our tropical storm uh, down here in the Pacific Ocean as well. We've got tropical storm Flossine down here as well, becoming expected to become a Category 2 hurricane by later on tomorrow afternoon and then eventually move its way up here into Baja, California. We've also got another area of t uh, disturbance to watch down here just south of that after this storm or after this hurricane moves through we'll be seeing another chance of uh, another development down there we've also got to watch closer to home as we do have the chance for a stalled out cold front to produce uh, or to set up a low pressure system at the end of this weekend that could potentially become our third name storm of the year so we do need to watch off the east coast here off the coast of florida uh, going into the weekend here where we could see a tropical depression or tropical storm spin up as well 20 percent chance of development right now from the national hurricane center with that there so we'll keep you guys updated on that uh, like i said not a lot going on with severe weather other than today and tomorrow we'll in a, in a more of a lesser severe weather pattern and then we'll start to see maybe some things ramp back up after we get through this weekend going into next week we'll kind of hit on that kind of talk briefly on that but we'll go ahead and dive into that uh, hurricane outlook here just briefly here I'll mention this one more time tropical storm berry or what was tropical storm berry now remnant low berry moving through Mexico right now bringing heavy rainfall wind out there if you are back down there in Mexico visiting or vacationing there are people that do do that um, just be safe be uh be weather aware out there. There could be some problems out there with the heavy rainfall that happens. And then, like I said, we are watching 20% chance of development. This has not increased or decreased since yesterday once it was issued. We'll see. Potentially, it may go up a little bit with the percentages, maybe up to a 30 or 40 as we continue to see uh, – trends with our models uh, in terms of what's going to happen with the end of the weekend here. Remember, this is not supposed to develop until probably Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, um, excuse me, at the end of this week here. So we'll keep you guys updated on that and kind of go from there and talk about what that does in tomorrow's video and in Wednesday's video. So uh, we'll go ahead and go to the Storm Prediction Center, kind of talk about what's going to happen today. A very, very low end risk for severe weather, a widespread marginal risk today for much of the plains, much of the Ohio Valley, much of the Northeast up here back down into the Arkansas area, back into Tennessee, getting down here into northern Mississippi. So very low wind threat today. Both All of these marginal risks are for wind and for hail. So wind could exceed 60 miles per hour, maybe some 70 mile an hour wind gusts occasionally. And then we've got the threat for some small hail back down here into Texas and Oklahoma. But there's not really a tornado risk today. I always tell people this, even though there's not a highlighted tornado risk, you can always see the chance for an isolated tornado somewhere. So it's less than 2%, but not zero. Wind threat at five and the hail threat at five. So not a big day for severe weather. And then tomorrow, we're going to push this cold front off the East Coast tomorrow. We'll have a marginal risk outside from North Carolina, South Carolina, all the way up to Maine. And then we'll have a small slight risk that extends from Philadelphia back down into Baltimore, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., where we'll have a slight risk at level two out of five for wind. So wind threat tomorrow at 15 and 5% for wind up to 70. Hail threat is less than five and the tornado risk is less than two. And then we get to the day three outlook, guys. And for the first time in quite some time, I have not seen uh spc not issue some type of risk zone so we are just looking at a widespread general thunderstorm risk for your day three outlook on wednesday here uh so that's something to be excited about not going to be looking at too much of any severe weather um going into wednesday going into thursday here we could see severe weather return going into friday saturday and sunday somewhere up in the high plains um potentially as a little shortwave trough or two moves its way through we'll kind of talk about what that looks like here in just a second but i don't think it's going to be anything too ridiculously crazy we'll keep you guys updated on that in the next two days if anything changes with that here now let's talk about our global pattern and kind of what we're going to be seeing here over the next couple of days here like i said we are continuing to see this little shortwave trough move its way through this is what's going to move its way into the ohio Valley and the Plains later on this afternoon, giving us a low end threat for severe weather across the Ohio Valley, across the Plains, across the Northeast. We get into tomorrow here, and that trough continues to advance eastward here, giving us a threat for damaging winds and a low isolated tornado threat and a wind threat for tomorrow. And then after that, we start to see ridging take over both on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday here, seeing most of that troughing stay up in Canada. We see a little bit of troughing set up on Friday across the Midwest and the Plains here, giving us maybe a low and like marginal risk day of severe weather, maybe on the 4th of July here. 
But even if that happens, I don't think it's going to be anything that's going to ruin people's uh, 4th of July plans. So wouldn't be too concerned about that. We are going to have to start to watch this little spin down here, this little cutoff flow back down here into uh, the west side of Florida that could eventually develop into potentially our next name storm. We'll see if that happens, may happen, may not happen. Um, and then we do start to watch, like I said, some troughing return, both going into Saturday and both going into Sunday, where we could see some severe weather across the plains again going into the weekend here. And then after that, things just get a little bit more uncertain on what's going to happen. But we do know is we're probably going to see a pretty big trough set up going into the following week. We'll see the models have been pretty consistent with this uh, more than about about 10 days out. So we got to watch it, uh, watch it for trends, see what happens with this. But this would bring some colder air aloft back down for a below average temperature trend again through the middle of July, as well as possibly some severe weather. So we'll keep you guys updated on that. But mostly going to be looking at a non active pattern until we get back into the second and third week of July, where I think things will pick back up again. One more thing I do want to show you guys before we wrap this video up for today is going to be just the over total, uh, total rainfall totals that we're going to see here. Um, we are going to see the threat for some heavy rainfall back down into Florida, back down into the Panhandle, Florida, getting into southern Georgia, the southeast. Down here where we have that remnant low develop if this does in fact develop into a named storm or you know something that could cause some damage with the wind or anything we'll let you guys know and we'll keep you guys updated throughout the week in terms of like video forms i'll try to make some videos on my phone if i need if i need to uh this week while we're on vacation but if not most of this will just be heavy rainfall. We could see a pretty good amount of rainfall in western portions of Florida, getting into Tampa, getting up into like Tallahassee, getting into southern Georgia, southern Alabama here, getting up in the Carolinas. So a pretty significant swath of heavy rainfall between now and next Monday on the 7th of July, where we could see one to three, maybe some three to five, and maybe some higher totals than that in some localized spots. But other than that, mostly everybody else will be seeing general thunderstorms with a one to three inch rainfall rate total potential, or well, not rainfall rate total, but a one to three inch total of rainfall through the next seven days here. Other than that, I just don't see a lot of issues for the 4th of July. So if anything changes over the next two days, we'll let you guys know. We'll keep you guys updated. We'll have Tropic updates as well going through the next two days. But other than that, guys, be safe, be weather aware, um, and we'll see you guys in the next one.